Hello viewers, welcome to the video lectures on machine learning. In this session, I shall explain you the machine learning process. So this process consists of the stages that are shown here in the diagram. The very first stage is the understanding the business. Then we have the understand the data, data pre-processing, modeling, model evaluation. When you are making the machine learning model for a particular task, for what particular business, for what particular job you are making, that you need to understand very clearly. So clearly understand the objectives and requirements of the business. Only once you understand all these things, then you are able to formulate a problem statement. So if the problem statement is formed, then only it is easy for you to proceed for the next step. Next step is what? Understanding the data. Understanding the data is simply exploring the data, finding the relationships between the attributes of the data set. Whatever data you have collected from the organization, you need to study the data thoroughly and you need to find out what is the relationships that are existing between the different attributes of the data set. After you explore the data in this understand the data stage, still if you are not able to get the complete requirement, definitely you can go back to the previous stage and get to know the complete requirements and proceed for the next step. So that is about the second stage, understanding the data. Then comes the data pre-processing. Data pre-processing basically involves the following steps, cleaning the raw data, transformation of real world data to a clean data set takes place here, missing values, inconsistent values, duplicate values may be present in the raw data. That's why raw data cannot be used for building a model. So when you are giving the data to a machine, you have to what carry out the transformation of the data and transformation of the data is needed because the present data may be having some missing values or some duplicate values may also be present. So that kind of data is not suitable for you to give it to the machine. That's the reason you need to carry out the process called cleaning the data set. Methods of cleaning the data set are mentioned here. In some cases you may ignore the missing values that are present in the data set but in most of the cases what is that you have to remove instances having the missing values. In case if you do not want to remove the missing values, then you can fill those missing values using the mean, median or mode formulas. Then you have to remove the duplicate instances. Normalizing data in the data set. Normalizing data in the data set is simply like this because some of the values in the data set may not be in the same scale. You have to normalize it to a common scale, common scale or smaller scale. For example, this one column is having what? The values like this 1, 6, 8, 4, 5. This may be the uh, number of years of experience of an employee. Then another column is having some more values like this. This may be what the different levels of the employee. And there may be one more column wherein the salary of the employees is mentioned. If you observe here, one column is having all the values that may fall in the range 1 to 10. The another column is also having values that may fall within 1 to 10 but the last column is what having values that are not having in this range when you see such values in the data set you need to normalize to a smaller scale so as to match with the values of the other attributes so that is called as normalizing data in the data set this you will be learning definitely in detail in future topics presently at least you should be knowing that if you have to transform the data into a smaller scale then you call it in simpler terms as normalizing the data in the data set next step is modeling here in this stage you will be using an algorithm in order to train the data algorithms are chosen based on the type of the problem and type of the data now if the problem is like classification the data will be a label data you will be using what a classification algorithm if your problem is a regression task then you will be using a label data the algorithm is the regression algorithm and if your problem is to create clusters unlabeled data will be given here and you can use the clustering algorithm so this way with you can obtain a model or pattern what is the difference between model and pattern pattern is applicable to some attributes only so we say it is local whereas model is applicable to the entire data set it is a global the next stage in the machine learning process is training the model so the data set is divided into training data set and testing data set and in training most of the time you will be using 80 percent of the data or you will be using 70 percent of the data whereas for testing you may use 20 percent of the data or 30 percent of the data so this is generally 80 slash 20 or 70 slash 30 can be the splitting for the training and testing purpose 
but definitely it also depends on the size of the data set so you need not do always 80 20 70 30 just look at the size of the data set then decide how much percentage you are going to select for training and how much percentage you are going to select for so once you carry out the modeling the next one is you need to evaluate the model evaluation is very much required here because you have to check the performance of the model as per your expectations whether the model is going to give you the output evaluating the model to test whether the model is good evaluation of the model is definitely needed it is evaluated that is the model is tested with data that has never been used for training this already i just told in the previous step whatever percentage of data you are using for training the remaining percentage only you will be using it for testing so the model has not experienced with the testing data for the first time you are giving that type of data for the testing purpose then the performance of the model can be checked with the performance metrics accuracy precision and recall so these are the three important performance metrics for the model accuracy precision and recall what is the difference between these three terms so i'll just give you in with simple example the difference between accuracy and precision suppose if the true value or the tar target value is 18.5 let us assume that for a particular experiment okay in uh, chemistry lab or physics lab anything you take the expected value or the correct value the students need to get is 18.5 for some experiment so student one x1 has got the value 18.6 so 18.6 is definitely very close to 18.5 the student x2 has got the value 18.5 18.5 is exactly the uh, exactly the same as that of the true value so it is more accurate next is x3 the student x3 has got a value 18.7 which of course is not having that much accuracy as that of the true value so how do you define accuracy accuracy is closeness to the true value closeness to the true value 18.5 is here exactly the same as that of the true value 18.6 is little closer 18.7 is closer so this is how you can test the accuracy but what about precision now this student x1 who got the value 18.6 first tried the experiment got the value 18.6 okay then retried got it as 18.5 then retried again 18.7 then taking the mean of these three values the final value is 18.6 now check here 18.6 18.5 and 18.7 how close these values are there so after every try there is a difference here in the values how much closer are these values to each other precision is values closer to each other so in the second case the student x2 first got 18.6 retried 18.9 retried 18.0 then the mean is 18.5 here so that is taken as the final value student x3 got the value 19 in the first attempt retried 18.5 retried 18.8 so after that taking the mean got the value as 18.7 this way the students got the final value as 18.6 18.5 18.7 respectively but if you look here the more precise values first we will observe that which is the most accurate value accurate value is obtained by student x2 student x2 no doubt has got the accurate value but the values are not precise because if you look here 18.6 18.9 and 18.0 they are too far from each other whereas for student x1 the student x1 the value is 18.6 which may not be accurate but the values are very much precise here the closeness to each other if you look 18.6 18.5 and they are much closer so finally you check for x3 value is 18.7 which is not accurate here even the values are not precise also 19 18.5 18.8 they are not close to each other finally the conclusion is what the conclusion is a model which is accurate may not have the precision and a model which is not accurate may be more precise now you can just write it in the comment box in machine learning whether you will choose a model with more accuracy and less precision or a model with less accuracy and more precision there is one more performance matrix called as recall how do you define this how often a machine learning model identifies positive instances from all the actual positive samples so here i'll just give an example for recall suppose in your data set you have uh, 12 instances of 12 images of cat and the model predicted correctly nine images only that means it has missed three images it has not identified those three images correctly so out of the total 12 images nine have been identified 
so 9 divided by 12 0.75 is the value here a recall value will lie in the range of 0 to 1 higher is the recall value better is the model the model is not performing well it is rebuilt using different hyperparameters accuracy can further be improved by tuning hyperparameters so what are hyperparameters some parameters with respect to the algorithm need to be set before you start training the model so for example like when you start driving a car you set some some of the things like seat belt mirrors and all same way here also for the algorithm you are going to set some parameters those parameters are called as hyperparameters the last stage here will be the deployment here so the deployment is you have built the model now then finally it can be used to perform the task which you have formulated in the problem statement and their unseen data can be used to make the predictions accurately so these are the different stages i'll just scroll from the first slide onwards see this is the diagram for the machine learning process you have to remember in this block diagram the different stages and here you have a bi-directional arrow between understanding business and understanding the data as well between data pre-processing and modeling you have the bi-directional arrow that understand the business understanding the data data pre-processing modeling training the model evaluating the model deployment this completes the different stages in the machine learning process hope you find this session useful if you find it useful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care